Wear sunscreen, kids. I'm sure many of you have been wondering why I haven't been so active with Intel lately. I haven't talked much about the X299 chipset, the LGA2066 socket, it's because for 99% of you, that entire platform is stupid. It's a prime example of Intel's misguided and ill-informed marketing strategy intended to redirect your attention from the red team. We've seen this ploy time and time again, and not just with the PC tech industry. Do not be fooled. What you're looking at here is almost an exact replica of the i7-7700K. Yes, folks, this is the i7-7740X. Behold, it's nothing different. Stay away, the specs line up in almost every way, save, ooh, here we go, a whopping 0.1 GHz base frequency bump. Are you freaking kidding me? You also can only run up to dual channel max in the CPU, even though its required X299 motherboard has slots for 8 modules in quad channel. So four of those will have to be blank unless you want to put stuff there just for show. This list continues, by the way, into even more pathetic territory. Brace yourselves, I'm about to unleash on the blue team, and it's about time. Let's ignore all of what we've heard regarding the X299 platform to date. Even the reviews, the benchmarks, at this point, clear your head, close your eyes, and listen to these ridiculous facts I'm about to save you a bunch of money. The first of these, that Intel decided this time around to cut into your PCIe lanes across the board, with the exception of the $1000 chip. If you want an 8-core 16-thread enthusiast processor, good for you, you're only going to get 28 PCIe lanes. Actually a downgrade from the 5960X and 6900K counterparts. What sense, if any, does it make for the enthusiast consumer? Now I'm saying that on purpose because that's the 1% here. You are more than likely in the 99% club, which means that you won't be able to fully utilize or get anywhere close to fully utilizing the 8 cores, 16 threads, 10 cores, 20 threads available in these higher tiered CPUs that are going to cost upwards of a thousand bucks. It's just a, a fact. Even I don't utilize that much. That's why I'm sporting a 6700K in my daily editing rig. I don't need anything more than that and chances are you don't either. And even if you could find an excuse for those 4 cores or 8 cores and that enthusiast Enthusiast X299 platform, you have other options that are much cheaper, frankly. Z97, Z170, Z270, X370, B350. Ryzen is a compelling offer. Now, sure, the X299 8 core 16 thread CPU here is only priced at $599, which is a considerable bump down from the 5960X and 6900 case prices, which are still roughly at $1,000 US. So the prices come down, but that's not the point here. Price is not the issue when it comes to, to enthusiast grade CPUs. It's what you get for that price. If you're going to pay $600, bucks, well, you better expect some compromises, but then why are you even considering X299 in the first place if you're going to expect those compromises? You want the full 4044 PCIe lanes, you have to buy the most expensive processor in the current lineup, and that's a bit ridiculous if you ask me. The 7820X here has literally taken an arrow to the knee. Regardless of the fact that most graphics cards run on 8 lanes just as well as 16, pairing 3 or 4 of anything becomes... Well, pointless, and isn't that the point of an enthusiast platform to have that upgrade option available? Consider M.2 RAIDs and 10 gigabit Ethernet as well. And since Intel sets this platform up to last at least three or four years, the idea of future-proofing for potential Vega and Volta cards, for example, which may require the full 16 lanes each, goes completely out the window. Look, in terms of gaming, about the only people who should be considering the X299 platform are those who are gonna pair three or four graphics cards into the same rig. Now, they can't do that with Pascal, but they can do that with Maxwell, and they can do that with uh, Crossfire configurations on AMD's side. So it kind of makes sense to have those extra PCIe lanes there because you will at some point utilize those. You can do 8888 8, 8, and still be completely in the green with 44 PCIe lanes, but you have to spend a thousand bucks to even get that in the first place. So what the heck is going on? Intel's giving you the finger. Want the lanes? Pay up. I was so surprised when I saw the lane counts. I was really disappointed. But on from that, even the motherboards themselves are going to be extremely expensive. Expect to pay around 300 bucks, if not more, for a motherboard just to put your CPU in for this X299 platform. Now, that's not surprising in itself. X series lineups have always been expensive. So we have the X79 boards, the X99 boards, and now the X299 boards, and they've all been around the same prices, anywhere between 250 and maybe 600 bucks. They can get very expensive, but here's the issue I have with, with the board prices and something like an i7-7740. X. If you're paying more for your motherboard than you are for your CPU, something is not right. In fact, it's just downright ridiculous in how you know you're not PCing correctly. In fact, why do these two even exist? Like, why even bother? It's because Intel's banking on your sale. Hopefully this stops you in your tracks, especially for these two here. Like, why the hell is a 4-core, four 4-thread four CPU even in this mix? I'm trying to do you a favor here, by the way. I'm not trying to just bash on Intel. The point of this video is to save you money, and to save you from a product that ultimately isn't worth your money. 
And if you notice, I'm not even really discussing X299 applications. They won't really apply to most of you watching, and I can say that safely. I tried to talk a friend out of X299 a few days ago. He was so into it, so sold on the product from a marketing standpoint that I really couldn't convince him to eat the small IPC drop in favor of Ryzen 7. I said, look, if you want 8 cores and 16 threads, go Ryzen 7, save yourself at least 500 bucks. Sure, optimizations tend to tilt, at least at this point in time, in favor of the blue team, but AMD's come a long way, and they offer compelling price points. And for 99% of you, 8 cores is more than enough for your daily computing needs. So it sounds tempting, I get it, I purchased a thousand dollar CPU and fell right into that trap. I realized that, well, the extra four cores really weren't doing me much good in anything that I was working on uh, daily just for the channel or on social media or what have you. I even do a bunch of blender tests and stuff and I just didn't find the extra money, the seven hundred dollars into that CPU and the more expensive motherboard worth it. And I have a feeling that most of you will feel the same way, so save yourself the trouble, just don't bother in the first place. The truth is, most programs fall well short short of max thread utilization. The law of diminishing returns becomes more evident when more money is on the table. So save it. Stick with Z97, Z170, Z270, B350, X370. Those are all viable platforms at this current point in time, all viable chipsets, and you will not notice a huge performance cut. You'll save a heck of a lot of money, by the way, in the process. But for those of you who do think that you will reap the benefits of X299, I keep getting all the Xs and Zs and all that confused, I'm not saying that you shouldn't buy it. I mean, if you know you're going to utilize the threads, you know you're going to utilize the horsepower, and you need a new platform, maybe you're on X79 right now, and you want something new and better, then the platform is still viable for you. I get it. I'm not saying that for the 1% or so of you that do utilize those resources, you shouldn't buy it. I think it's still decent. I just think that it doesn't really appeal to most of us. And that's what this video is intended to do, to warn most of you to not fall into this marketing ploy. With that, if you like my sunburn or like the video, be sure to give this one a thumbs up, thumbs down for the opposite, or if you hate everything about life, be sure to click the subscribe button if you haven't already. Stay tuned for the next video here on the channel. I'll announce the giveaway winner, by the way, of the RX 580 in the next video, which will be uploaded tomorrow night, I presume. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.